Greetings. I am Giuliano. We are the Arcturians. I have visited and observed other planets in this galaxy that have higher life, life forms on them. And our Octurian project includes other planets which have higher civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. This is a huge galaxy and there are many other planets with higher life forms on it. But it is still statistically small compared to the number of stars and the number of existing planets. Some estimates are that there are 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And even if each star had nine planets, which is what this star does, your sun, can you imagine the number of planets that there are in the galaxy? And then some uh, solar systems have more than nine planets. But <clears throat> think for a moment about moon planets because there are probably more moon planets than there are just planets. Now, moon planets, in our definition, are moons that are going around a planet and have developed the biological <clears throat> biosphere for life forms. There is a potential moon planet, for example, uh, around Jupiter and even uh, possibly Saturn. So <clears throat> and these, these planets have more than one moon. I found in our research and exploration 5,000 planets with higher life forms in the galaxy. So that is statistically insignificant compared to the 200 billion suns and expanded planets. But it is important. Every planet is important. And we have made every effort to visit every planet. In some planets we have been received, in other planets we have not. We have observed some planets actually destroying themselves. And I know that this is a huge concern on the, of this planet. The possibility, especially of a catastrophic event that is man-made. Now, this sixth mass extinction is man-made. It is not an extinction caused by an asteroid or it is not an extinction caused by an ice age. It is an extinction caused by man. Now I know that there are many people trying to convince the world that this is normal, what is happening on this planet, <clears throat> whatever normal means. But just think for one moment. Every species on this planet, existence, every species' existence depends upon humanity. Whether humanity seeks to protect that species, whether humanity seeks to 
continue destroying habitat, whether humanity considers putting more pollution in the oceans and in the atmosphere, that means that it's under the control of humanity. And this is the only time in this history of the Earth where the continued existence of biological species is dependent upon one species. You've heard me talk about the planetary stages of development. And I have told you that there are five stages of development. And very simply, I use the numerical progression of one through five. And I point out that the Earth is right at the end of stage one. But at stage one, it is a conflict, a conflict which I call spirituality versus technology. The technology of humanity has advanced tremendously, especially in the past 100 years and even the past 20 years. You have seen the introduction of nuclear weapons and the explosion of the nuclear bomb over Hiroshima, which, I may add, was observed throughout the galaxy. Because that explosion was communicated throughout the galaxy, even though it was localized. I mean to say that the solution to this planetary crisis, to this sixth mass extinction, is a spiritual intervention. It has an evolutionary spiritual intervention. It is an evolutionary process that is needed. And it is the only solution. I refer continually to the fifth dimension and to planetary ascension and to your personal ascension. And you and I and your members are working to prepare the way for the ascension of the planet. And the work that you are describing today, the biorelativity work and the planetary cities of light and ocean reserves of light work are vital to the preparation for the ascension. Ascension of the planet means interaction with the fifth dimension. And I say that there is coming in January of 2023 a, an event, a spiritual event to this earth. And this event I call the intersection of the fifth dimension with the third dimension. Think for a moment about what a spiritual intervention on this planet would look like. It would have to be an event that would get the whole world's attention, just the way the world is focused, for example, on COVID-19, pandemic, or just the way the world is focused on a football game or a baseball game. But it would even be greater than that. And it would have to be a, an event that moved people emotionally and spiritually 
Now, we all know that if Jesus Sananda appeared in a spaceship and uh, on some presidential lawn, then this would be an event reported around the world. And that leads me to this beautiful concept of first contact. And many of you are ready and waiting for a first contact. And you see the first contact as a spiritual intervention that a beloved ascended master a beloved teacher of the galaxy, such as Ashtar or Ptah, or they even one of the Acturians, would appear in a ship, a ship that is protected from all missile attacks, because you and I both know that there would be some who would want to destroy somebody coming from another planet. And this appearance would be covered dramatically. And what could this person say? What could this person do that would heal the planet, that would save the planet? And I tell you, that the message would be this. You must raise the spiritual light quotient of the planet. You must look towards the fifth dimension. You must raise the, sp the uh, number of planetary cities of light. You must communicate with Gaia telepathically. You must gather people and work together towards the next evolutionary stage of humanity called Homo Omega. The being would say, Homo sapien is at the end. This is the end of the line for Homo sapien. Homo sapien is not the last species of your line, but it is one in the stage of development. And the next stage of development is Homo Omega. And it is only in that next stage of development, the development of Homo Omega, that the Earth will gather the spiritual energy and power to transform, to heal, to repair this planet. The good news is that this planet still can be repaired. And there are millions of star seeds. I estimated recently there are 8 million star seeds on this planet right now. Now, that may only be 1% of the total population. But, remember, religious movements, spiritual movements, have started with far fewer people. And this effort can be accelerated. This transformation can be accelerated, and you are laying the foundation for that. Now, I want to say something about neutralization of negative energies, because there are several approaches. There's the personal approach, which can be described as looking at it from a higher perspective. And when you see a negative event, then you go 
to what we call a higher floor of consciousness and look for the overall picture. The overall picture is that there has been millions of different species <clears throat> that have come and gone on this planet. And as sad as one can say, extinction is part of the planetary developmental process. If there were not extinctions, then the dinosaurs would still be here. And if the dinosaurs were still here, they would be eating all the humans. You would be lunch for a dinosaur or maybe a dessert. So the extinctions, as sad as it is, is part of the process. And in planetary stage two of development, the species learn to protect and control all the species on the planet. And this is where Earth potentially can move to. Now, the intersection of the dimensions means that there is a eclipse where the fifth dimension is coming so close to the third dimension that it intersects. And I estimated approximately 5% the top, the bottom 5% of the fifth dimension will intersect with the top 5% of the third dimension. And that intersection will be responsible for a huge download of spiritual energy. Now, it is hard to describe a download of spiritual energy. But think about it from the standpoint of the sun. The sun emits electromagnetic energy. The, the sun has solar storms. The sun uh, has coronal mass ejections. And based on activities, solar activities, the particles and rays of light and energy travel 93 million miles from the core of the sun to the earth. In some cases, in eight minutes. In other cases, it takes a, a day or two, depending upon whether the uh, energy is traveling at the speed of light or not. And some of these storms could create terrible disasters. All of the Satellites could be wiped out in one solar storm, for example. But that gives you an idea of a electromagnetic force. Now, there are also cosmic forces that generally you may not be aware of. I say generally because they do affect you. Just think for a moment about astrology and how astrologically sensitive you are to the positions of the planets and the position of the, the zodiac. And that's just the 12 constellations that are uh, you are observing. But there are extra solar and, and, and influences, even as you know, heard me say, uh, from the great attractor force, a force, a force field that is millions of light years away, that is mysteriously attracting uh, all perhaps 60 to 70 galaxies to move in a direction that could be called towards the new center of the universe. Now, the, the intersection of the dimensions, then, is a spiritual force. It's a force field. Just like electromagnetic energy from the sun emits a force field. And this force field interacts with your cosmic egg, with your aura. Now, it is a fact in the study of 
radio waves and electromagnetic energy that you have to be resonant with the energy in order to receive and use it. In other words, there can be new spiritual energy coming. But if you're not at the same vibration, then how are you to receive it? How are you to use it? And this is why I talk about preparation for the intersection. This is why I talk about preparation for the ascension, where you are working to be at the right frequency response, at the right vibration. Now, negativity is a problem because if you get stuck in the negativity, that brings your vibration down. This is one of the goals of the planetary cities of light. Because the planetary cities of light is creating a bubble, is creating a dome of light using the crystals over the city of light to, to the best of its ability, will protect that city of light from negativity. So the answer to neutralization is creating domes of light around your cities of light, around your ocean reserves of light, domes of light around your homes. And these domes of light are activated fifth dimensional domes. Just like you activate a city of light using four crystals and a ceremony and having people come together you can activate, you can plant crystals around your house. You can activate healing energy field around your home and even around you that will be of protection, that will neutralize the negativity, the negative energy. But you and I want to go further than that. We want to expand the neutralization towards the planet. We want to expand it so that there is no longer war, so there's no longer destruction of the biosphere. Now we have planetary exercises that involve projecting you as planetary healers to places like on the moon and then looking at the entire earth and setting up a special aura healing exercises for the earth, including healing dimensional fractures. Because the dimensional fractures are allowing negativity from the lower fourth dimension to come into the earth. The other aspect I want to explain is that the intersection of the dimensions has two levels. It has the planetary level and the personal level. And now I want to talk about the personal level. Visualize for a moment your cosmic egg, your aura, and see your aura in the shape of the cosmic egg. See your aura as a circle of light around you. Do this for a moment, please. See your aura and see your cosmic egg around you. And to the best of your ability, let it expand 
eight, nine inches from you. Now, as you are doing that, think for a moment about your fifth dimensional body, which we are helping to protect and hold on the Octarian Crystal Lake. And I, Giuliano, establish a corridor of light from the Octarian Crystal Lake and from your fifth dimensional body on the Octarian Crystal Lake to you on Earth. And instead of you thought projecting yourself to the Octarian Crystal Lake, I, Giuliano, am going to send your fifth dimensional body and the aura energy field of your fifth dimensional body to you here on Earth. The corridor of light is above you. I, Giuliano, take your fifth dimensional body and I send it down the corridor of light. And your fifth dimensional body is now six feet above you. Oh. Your fifth dimensional body has an aura. It has a cosmic egg just like your third dimensional body. And invite your fifth dimensional body to intersect with your third dimensional body. Allow the bottom 5% of your fifth dimensional body to intersect now with the top 5% of your Earth energy cosmic egg. Feel now that intersection occurring. And as that intersection is occurring, feel the transfer of fifth dimensional light from your fifth dimensional body into your third dimensional body now. We will go into silence and meditation as you experience that intersection. Transfer and direct that fifth dimensional energy to whatever part of you that is needed. Whether it be your physical organs, your spirit, your emotional body. Your mental body your physical body. And 
receive and transfer this wherever you want. Very good. Very good. You are transferring. You are experiencing an intersection. You can hold that intersection for the rest of this lecture. Now imagine the planet being that way. Imagine the fifth dimensional Earth intersecting the third dimensional earth. And then it will be necessary for people like you to direct that fifth dimensional energy to places that are needed on the earth. And I, Giuliano, with the Ascended Masters are going to make available With the work of you, the star seeds, the fifth dimensional earth energy at the intersection. And just like you direct the fifth dimensional energy to where you need it in your energy field, so this can be accomplished and directed. We, the Ascended Masters, can bring and will bring at the January time a fifth dimensional energy field of the Earth as part of this intersection exercise process. And you, the star seeds, will be key in this new work. The your fifth dimensional body is now going to leave and go back to the Octurian Crystal Lake. Say goodbye and receive one last download. And know that with this type of energy, you can hold and protect yourselves from negativity. And each planetary city of light can do the same thing. Each planetary city of light can bring down the fifth dimensional aspect of that city of light and intersect and download for protection, neutralizations, and raising of the spiritual light energy field. Your fifth dimensional body returns to the Acturian Crystal Lake. And we are going to conclude this lecture. I send my blessings to you, the star seeds, the Acturian star seeds, and the group of 40. I am Giuliano. Good day.